as we all know, Naruto has some amazing arcs and some not so amazing arcs. Let's take a look at the top 10. In 10th place, we have the 5 Kage Summit. I like the introduction of new characters and their abilities, especially the bodyguards of all the Kage. The fights are some of the best in the show, and Danto gets killed, which is amazing. As a Kakashi fan, I like this because we got to see one of those moments where other shinobi talk about his legendary status. Hey boss, that guy, the one standing there on the right, it's Kakashi Hatake. Come on, I know that much. And Sasuke has one of the best entrances in the entire show when he appears on the ceiling. Other than those fights and scenes though, nothing really stands out. Some of the pros of this arc are rare feat in Naruto by showing some world building and introducing characters from other villages and also the samurai of the land of iron I want to say. It highlights the complexities of the ninja world and its power dynamics and then it also sets the stage for major plot developments. Some cons are the pacing can feel a little slow especially with the amount of dialogue going on and then the last con is Sasuke should have fucking died because of Anoki's particle or dust release. Number nine, Kazakage rescue mission arc. Don't know why that felt like a tongue twister because it isn't. This arc kicks off Shippuden and follows up the menacing introduction of the Akatsuki pretty well. We're introduced to Deidara and Sasori who at this point of the story seem pretty menacing and formidable. They do show scary feats of fighting strength, notably in the Sand Village, the fight against Kankuro, the fight against Sakura. We're introduced to Granny Chio, who you learn to love as a character very quickly. And I'll say it. Her death made me cry. That was sad shit. Some pros of this arc. This arc expands the, the lore of the Akatsuki and their motives. It highlights Gara's character development and his bond with Naruto. Especially when they do the side-by-side -side flashback story. So good. Some cons, some of the fights feel rushed and they lack insufficient buildup, and some characters receive limited screen time or development. Specifically, yeah, you know. Number eight, the tale of Jiraiya the Gallant. This arc follows Jiraiya's efforts to uncover information about pain, which at the time you're very intrigued by because pain seems like such a mystery. You only ever see him through a hologram. And also the Hidden Rain Village is nothing like we've ever seen before. It delves into Jiraiya's past and he struggles against powerful enemies, namely Hanzo the Salamander. Jiraiya is also shown in a new light in the flashbacks. He's shown as more of a caretaker type sensei rather than a drunk perv who leaves his students to train on their own. The fleshing out of his backstory also shows how much him and the rest of the legendary signing did for Konoha during the second shinobi world war which is really cool and obviously his fight with all the parts of pain is super cool and teases the parts powers for the upcoming arc and yeah his death is fucking devastating and especially when you see naruto find out that jiraiya has died that's some heartbreaking shit right there some pros of this arc as i mentioned it provides insight and character development into jiraiya's backstory it builds up the mystery and the threat of pain. Like I said, he feels super menacing and mysterious. And then, yeah, it offers emotionally impactful moments like dry dying and me wanting to kill myself when it happened. <laughs> okay. Some cons are some of the plot twists feel predictable and the arc can feel a little slow paced at times. That's why it's not too high up in the top 10, but still great arc and top 10 worthy. Number seven. Don't lose your mind. I know this is... I know some people may think this is too high, and it probably is, but I'm biased. The Hidan and Kakuzu arc. As a guy who loves Shikamaru and Kakashi, and a guy who cries very easily when characters lose someone they care about, this arc is perfectly catered for me. Asuma's death is heartbreaking, and the scene of the students all leaning over him as he dies had me in ruins. That was rough. The Shikamaru burial of Hidan is a masterpiece, and Kakashi against Kakuzu is so good as well. 
This arc focuses on intense battles and strategic planning and is written so well. It's right up my alley. And that's why I have it way higher than it probably should be. But that's personal bias. Some pros of the arc. It presents compelling fights and team dynamics, as I just said. It showcases the strengths and weaknesses of different characters and fleshes out Choji and Eno's abilities and di team dynamics a bit more than we've seen thus far. And it also highlights Naruto's growth as a leader. And I completely forgot to mention, we also see Naruto learn the Windstar Ross and Shuriken and his bond with Asuma before Asuma died. Some cons, and the second con is a pretty big one. The first is some of the battles feel a little dragged out, which is the case normally with Naruto fights. And the second is a big con, and not why it's higher, is we get limited exploration of Hidon and Kakuzu's backstories. It would have been nice to see a bit more. Number six, the fated battle between brothers. As an Uchiha hater, I'm surprised by how much I like this arc. Some people would have it higher. I think six is perfectly adequate. Itachi is an amazing character and is probably the best written character in the show. And this arc shows why. I may not be the biggest Sasuke fan, but this arc even made me feel sad for him somehow. The pros of the arc, it reveals the truth about Itachi's emotions, his sacrifices, everything he went through and why he did things. It's intense and emotionally charged, and it advances Sasuke's character development, which is a good thing, because up until that point, he's, he's just, he seems bratty. I think there's only really one con of this arc, and that is the main fight between Itachi and Sasuke is a little too Genjutsu-based. Like, they're just spamming hacks, and, oh, I'm over here. Oh, I'm over there. Oh, I was actually behind you this whole time. Stuff like that. Number five. The Sasuke Retrieval Arc. Some people may think this is too low or too high. Some people may think this belongs closer to number one. But I, as much as I love this arc, can't put the next four in here. Is it higher or lower? The next four are better, in my opinion. This arc is amazing in the way that it demonstrates the strength and determination of some of the Konoha 12. It also sets up one of my favorite running jokes of the show that Naruto doesn't know Shino and that's why Shino wasn't on the mission. I also like that this is where the San Shinobi become the good guys and they help some of the members defeat their respective opponents. Drunk Lee and Garo versus Kimimaro is such a good fight. And of course the final valley fight between Naruto and Sasuke is one of the best in the entire show. So the pros, as I said, showcases the strengths of Naruto's friends, some of them. It also introduces new power-ups and abilities, which they discover through being determined. It's so cool. The only con really is the fact that the arc is heavily focused on Sasuke, and that overshadows the other characters. Number four. Now, everybody calm down. This is the hottest take of the video. I've got, at number four, the fourth shinobi world war confrontation so let me explain this that's going to be everything up until toby's identity is revealed i think i think that's roughly where this arc ends because after that <laughs> shinobi world war goes to shit and it becomes plot hole central there's a few things i really really like about this arc that we haven't seen before from the show and that is the formation of new teams that comprise of shinobi from different villages the speech by gara is such a cold moment i love it i also really like the reanimated shinobi like legends from past wars that you hear about people you don't really hear about people you've seen before and their emotional ties to members of the shinobi alliance i think that's done super well so the pros are it sets the stage for a huge cinematic battle, which is going to be the climax of the war. Too bad the climax wasn't done that well, but the build-up was sick. It highlights teamwork and strategic planning, and it offers new opportunities for character development, and some characters make the most of that. The cons are some of the battles feel repetitive, and the pacing is slow. I think there's a common theme in these Naruto arcs. Number three, 
Chains Assault. This is the highest Shippuden entry on the list. What can I even say about it? It's basically a perfect arc. Most of the fights are so good and feel so stressful because of the weight of the attack of the village and also the inclusion of innocent civilians that are just amongst these little skirmishes within the village. It's so stressful. The main fight is absolutely amazing and one of the best in the show, again. But my favorite part is the conclusion of this entire arc where Naruto comes out of the tree and then Kakashi does that thing where he catches him after he's so fatigued. Good job. Kakashi-sensei. Stay still. I'll carry you. He's gotten heavier. Whenever Kakashi does that, I get like this weird, warm, fuzzy feeling. And then after that, he gets taken, Naruto gets taken to the village and his fellow shinobi. And he's celebrated. And he's this huge hero to everyone. And it's such a cool turning point because for years he was the outcast demon child that was either bullied or avoided by everyone he came into contact with. So that's some emotional shit right there. Number two, it's the Land of Waves arc. This is a huge majority of the Naruto fanbase's favorite arc. And it's almost true for me too. Except the one beat it. The tension of this arc is insane. Because we've got this young, fresh Genin up against this blood mist assassin of legend. And his partner who's roughly their age, but outclasses them astronomically. It's so stressful. Kakashi and Zabuzo have one of my favorite fights in the show. You learn about the Sharingan in this arc, which is super cool. Zabuzo and Haku's relationship evolves in such a short amount of time in this arc, and it really tugs on your emotions. When Zabuzo finally breaks and admits how special Haku was to him, and not just some soldier to be sacrificed for him, that's the first time I ever shed tears for an anime. I love this arc so much. But not as much as number one. Ah. Oh. Number one is the tuning exams arc. This arc really fleshes out side characters well. And some not so well. But for the most part it's good. And it's tournament based. Who doesn't love a tournament based arc? There's so many cold moments in this arc. And also so many new creepy villains like Gara, Orochimaru. The Sound Genin Squad, Kabuto, just to name a few. I think this arc has the perfect balance of goofy, cool, stressful, creepy moments. And all three stages of the exams are honestly peak fiction to me. I know that's some high praise, but nothing makes me feel the way the tuning exams do. And also, there's that scene. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite arcs are and what order you'd put them in. Let me know why I fucked up. And thank you so much for watching. Peace.